What's going on, everybody? It's Martin Fitness, aka Gangs. Before I start this video, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, stay up to date with all my motherfucking videos. Follow me on Instagram at Martin Fitness and follow my band, Divided Man on Spotify. All that shit will be in the description box below. If you guys want to see the channel grow, give the video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Helps the channel grow and doesn't cost you guys a fucking penny. If you guys want to donate to the channel, buy some Martin Fitness merch or some Divided Dimension merch, that shit will also be in the description box below. Speaking of merchandise, I got straight out of this shape. Straight out of shape, but bitch, I'm trying shirts. My new design got the Alperman Fitness apparel, uh, Alperman Fitness social media on the back, and it was it's supposed to say hashtag gains at the top, but my shirt guy kind of forgot. So this is kind of like a prototype, but it will say hashtag gains on the back in case you guys happen to give a fuck and you guys want to buy one. It'll be in the description box. But let's get to the topic at hand. Amber Lynn, I don't know shit about her other than that she's very, very, very obese. That's the only thing I really know about her. Um, she released a video with uh, a fitness tag. So she's basically or answering a bunch of questions that people are asking um, that are fitness related. And um, I thought I would react to it. So this is um, basically a fitness guy or bodybuilder, whatever the fuck you want to call me, um, reacting to Amber Lynn's fitness tag uh, video. So let's check out this video and see what she's talking about. I'd love to see their answers. So we are going to start this. The first question is, when did you start gaining weight? It was more so just like, I've always been overweight. Even as a baby, I was kind of chunky in my opinion. I mean, I don't know though. I <laughs> I don't remember not being big. I think the lowest I remember weighing is 290. I was like 11 years old. Okay, so the question was, when did she start gaining weight? And she said she can never remember being like a normal size. And then she says that she was 11 years old at 290 at her lowest. Where the fuck was her parents at at this time? Like you can control what your kid eats um, up until a certain age. And you can also kind of direct them, you know, in the right direction by only providing certain foods in the house. And um, wouldn't you notice your kid overeating like a ridiculous amount where the fuck was her parents and why wasn't her parents involved in her, like getting her on the right track from the start? Um, I don't understand. Like, I don't know like her history. I don't know anything about her. So like, does anyone know like where the fuck her parents were at at 11 years old? I don't understand that. That's shitty. Very bad parroting for God's sake. You could be making all kinds of different food for your child at 11 years old. And they're in her parents. Let her just indulge in everything that she wanted. Like, at some point, the parents are, are, are uh, to blame for, you know, the, the adolescence part of this, for sure. So. And then at 16 years old, I topped the charts at 420. And then just last year, I topped the charts again at 572.4. Let's never have that happen again. She topped the charts at 572.4? Holy shit. I had no idea she weighed that much. Jesus Christ. That's, that's. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. The second question is, are you an emotional eater? Yes, I am always wanting to eat, whether it's out of happiness, sadness, stress, boredom, whatever emotion it is, I always correlate it with food. If it's happiness or joy, let's celebrate with food. If it's stress, let's numb that for a little bit with food. If it's sadness, let's numb that a little bit with food. Food has just been what I've pretty much lived for. You know, I've lived for food instead of food making me survive it's more so like my whole life revolved around food also because food addict binge eater so it's like the mixture of all those things has made it to where i look like this <laughs> and made it to where it, it food ruined my life when it should be the one thing that made me survive but instead it made me stop living which is really sad but it's the truth no. so someone asked is she an emotional eater then she says um she is an emotional eater and that's one of the reasons why she's heavy but then she says she eats when she's happy, when she's sad, when she's bored, and when she's stressed out. So, basically, you're always fucking eating then? Because, like, I'm sorry, but that's, like, the majority of your life. Like, you're going to be one of those things. So, basically, you always fucking eat is what she's kind of saying here. Like, when are you not triggered to eat then? Next question. How long have you been dieting? So I don't consider this part of my journey. I've restarted journeys. I can't tell you how many times you guys know that firsthand. And I always call it a diet of this and of that. No, this is a lifestyle change. When I think of a diet, I think of, okay, so this is how I'm going to be eating until I reach my goal weight. And then 
guess that. No, this is a lifestyle change because I know maintaining is actually going to be a lot harder than actually losing my weight. So I don't want to consider this a diet. I don't think anyone should consider this a diet. I think that this should be just a new lifestyle for you that's helping you with your goals. Next question is, are you following a diet now? I'm actually intuitive eating right now, but I do have something in the making. You guys will see that video soon. I am honestly super excited for this chapter in my life <laughs> and I really hope that it pans out. So you guys will see when that comes. So somebody asked how long she'd been dieting and then she says, you know, she's went through so many different times and that she thinks it should be a life choice or a life, uh, a lifestyle. And that's absolutely 100% true. Like you cannot go back to your old habits. Otherwise you'll go back to where you were before. So absolutely you do need to, this does need to be a lifestyle for anyone trying to lose, anyone trying to lose weight. Um, you're, you, you, if you go back to what you were doing before, you're going to go back to what you were before. So absolutely, she's 100% right. It does need to be a lifestyle and a change for you for permanent. So fifth question, have you had success in the past? I have had one successful weight loss journey and I don't even want to consider that successful because I did lose 89 pounds, the famous 89 LBs, but I gained it back. Plus I gained back even more and more and more. So I can't really say that's a success, but at the time it was because I had never lost that much weight before ever. And I felt like on top of the world, I reached four, I started at 420 and I reached 331. I can't even tell you how unbelievable I felt. And things just hit the fan and I ended up gaining a ton of weight. So someone asked, has she had success? She says kind of, she lost 89 pounds and then she gained it back. At what point do you like, look at yourself in the mirror and be like, enough's a fucking enough you know what i mean like for me at 250 i would be like look look motherfucker you need to change something i would tell that to myself at like 250 probably <clears throat> but she went 250 three 350 four 455 like holy fuck like how did she not look at herself at some point and say i need to fucking do something you know and then she said she lost 89 pounds. That's fucking awesome. <clears throat> but then she said she gained it all back plus a lot more. So I don't know what would trigger her to like go back the other way. Like I would be curious to know like how she was going, you know, down 89 pounds is a lot. And then to just flip the switch and just go the other way. I don't know what something dramatic would have to happen to someone. I feel like otherwise their mindsets, their mindsets on losing weight. And then all of a sudden, it's just like they don't give a fuck again. Like, I don't know what happened, but that's that's insane. Next question. Do you follow a workout plan? I don't because I am really trying to focus on the eating aspect of this. I feel like losing weight happens a lot in the kitchen. It's about 98% kitchen, 2% working out. I don't like giving advice, but the biggest thing that I can say is that working out gives you heart health. It might help with weight loss here and there just a little bit, but it's mainly what you're eating. You cannot work off a bad diet. If you want to build your stamina or you want your heart to get more healthy and strong, then working out is perfect for that. Okay, so someone asked, does she work out and to lose weight? She basically says no. She's more, more worried about the nutrition side and that you can't work off a bad diet. That's absolutely 100% true. You cannot just eat whatever the fuck you want and expect to not gain fat just because you go to the gym. It's not going to happen. Um, a lot of people might think that, but that's absolutely not true at all. Um, and in her case, since she is so heavy... She absolutely needs to work on the nutrition aspect and get her weight down to a uh, a reasonable weight. I'd say around like 200 to 250. Then she can actually start going to the gym and trying to get a little bit of muscle on top and to kind of up her um, metabolic rate to kind of start walking more and um, start doing stuff like that. So I'd say absolutely as of right now to lose all that weight to get her to that spot, she would absolutely need, need to just focus on the nutrition aspect. And um, and honestly, it's not good for her to even be kind of doing that kind of activity with uh, that kind of weight, um, especially on her joints and everything. And I just feel like that's not really a good idea. So absolutely, she does need to focus on just the uh, the food intake side of it and don't go to the gym until she gets down to a reasonable weight. That's just my opinion. Let's keep going. The question is, what is your favorite diet? God, I hate that word. But I don't. if I had to answer the question, I would say simple calories in, calories out because that is what works. That is the science of it. If you're in a calorie deficiency, you're going to lose weight. It's pretty much that simple. 
So the question is, what's your favorite diet? She doesn't like that term. And for the most part, that's true. Calories in, calories out. I get it. But it's more, it's more, she also said it's simple. It's just as simple as that. And I mean, she said she lost 70 pounds already and she wants to lose 400 pounds. And I think she can do it if she actually, you know, really gets at it and like gets focused. I feel like she can get it done in three to four years if she really focuses and gets it, gets on it. And uh, I think that'd be awesome to see that, you know. But uh, to talk about the calories in and cal calories out aspect, you can have the same calories in two different two different um, groups, right? And let's say it's for let's say it's for someone to maintain their weight, and you have calories here and calories here, and let's say these calories over here are um, higher carbs, higher sodium, and lower protein. And then you have the same calories for this person, but it's higher protein, less carbs, and less sodium. And the person that has the sodium, more sodium, more carbs, and less protein, it actually might gain weight temporarily due to, to water retention. Um, and the person over here actually might get a thermic effect advantage because they have more protein in their diet. And higher protein is a more thermic effect of food. So the calorie, calories in, calories out theory is somewhat accurate, but it's actually more complicated than that. Um, but that is my opinion on that. So to say calories in, calories out, it's not necessarily true. Um, there's just more to it than that. So that's my take on it. Let's go, keep going. Eighth question. How much weight do you want to lose? I want to lose 400 pounds and I've already lost over 70 of that. So we're starting. So that still leaves me with about 330 pounds I want to lose. Oh my God. I literally want to lose a super morbidly obese person. Like that is really sad. So I started at 572.4 and my weight loss goal is 172.4. I chose that because that'll be exactly 400 pounds lost. Will it ever happen? I don't know. That seems like in my wildest dreams type situation, like fairy tale land. I, I honestly don't know if I see it happening, but I want to work towards that. I really do. My question, do you feel like you're addicted to food? Yes, 100%. The next question is, is she addicted to food? I feel like that's a very, very fucking stupid question to ask. I mean, can you really be that heavy and not be addicted to food? Let's be honest. You literally have to be eating almost at all times of the day. So clearly you're addicted to food. I feel like even asking that question is pretty fucking stupid. Let's go to the next question. 10, are you comfortable with your body now? No. And I know I never will be. I just, I know I won't because how I've looked all of my life, I have hated how I look. And I know that with weight loss, I'm gonna get a lot of extra skin. I'm gonna be sagging. I am going to be sagging, but I'm okay with that because extra skin shows a beautiful story. And I think extra skin is beautiful on people, but I am my own worst enemy. I am going to hate how I look just like I do now. But the thing is I'm gonna be healthier I'm gonna wear smaller size clothing. I'm gonna be able to breathe better. I'm gonna be able to have that thing of saying, oh my God, I'm down like hundreds of pounds. I'm excited for that. Am I excited for the skin? No. Is it possible to get it removed? Yes. But am I ever gonna be comfortable with my body? It's never gonna happen. So the question is, is she comfortable in her own body? And she says, absolutely not. Um, she's never been, she she thinks she, she never will be. Um, I feel like she, she, she could, if she lost all that weight, got skin removed, went to the gym, got some muscle, and, you know, kind of built her self-confidence up. I feel like she can absolutely be okay with herself um, at some point in her life. It's Is it a long shot? I'd say maybe. But it is possible for sure. I mean, obviously you have to go through the procedures of removing the skin. Um, and then you have to lose all that weight in the begin with. And you have to have self-confidence comes within in the begin with. And all that shit. But it is possible, and I would love to see that kind of happen. You know what I'm saying? To see someone lose all that weight and to build confidence and go through all the procedures and just look like a totally different person, I'm all for it, you know? So that's my opinion. Let's go to the next question and see what she's talking about. Question 11, do you deprive yourself of any food? I do not. I feel like moderation is key. <laughs> Queen of moderation, hey. Um, another famous quote. I, I do think moderation is key in my journey. I know a lot of people can't really do that. And I'm gonna be honest, you know, sometimes moderation does trigger me, which is okay. I need to learn how to be around certain foods and be able to eat certain foods without having this crazy binge monster come out because this is a lifestyle change. So I do not deprive myself of anything because I want to learn how to eat treats here and there without the shame 
and the guilt. And I know firsthand that when I deprive myself of food, I binge more than anything. It's, it's bad. So I know, you know, what works for me and I'm trying to switch it up. And I think that's the reason why this is actually working for me. So that was the 11 questions. That is where the weight loss tag would have ended. But I did add four more questions because 15 seemed legit. But I did answer 15 first because I feel like that was important. So the question is, does she deprive herself from any foods? I feel like that's also a dumbass question to ask. Can you possibly be 500 and whatever pounds she said she is and be deprived from any type of food? How can you be deprived from any type of food and weigh 500 and some pounds? You can't. It's impossible. And then she says if she does deprive herself from any foods, you know, if she's on some kind of diet, that she even binges more. And uh, absolutely, some people, you know, if you deprive yourself so much, it'll trigger you to binge. Then you'll end up over binging and overeating and just gain weight even more because you deprived yourself. Um, so, but I feel like that's a stupid question to ask, especially to ask someone that's that heavy. It's kind of a stupid question to ask. So 12, how much weight have you lost in total? I am down over 70 pounds, which I'm super freaking excited. Okay. That was scary. There so how much weight is she down in total? She said 70 pounds. She's very excited about it. And that's, that's good. That's a very good, um, it's a good start. And uh, luckily, definitely would love to see her keep going in the right direction. Teen, what's your biggest weight loss advice you'd want to give to someone wanting to lose weight? So I added this question because I feel like I wish more people would give their version of an advice. And I know everyone's advice is different because you go in the comments and everyone has different advice for what they want me to do. And, you know, you have to just listen to yourself and whatever works for you. But it's nice to have those options. So my advice would be obviously find what works for you. Stop listening to everyone else because everyone loses weight differently. Do all these weight loss plans work? Yes. But the thing about being able to choose which one works for you versus, oh, everything works, is that you need to find one that is sustainable within your life. Does that make sense? Because if I was to sit here and do Dr. Now's weight loss journey, I wouldn't be able to do it because that is not sustainable in my life right now. But yeah, biggest advice is just listen to yourself and choose what works for you. So the question is, what's the biggest advice um, for losing weight? She basically says, do it works for you. And that's absolutely true. Um, if you have two options, you know, if you have A diet and B diet and you want to do A diet, but someone's telling you to do B diet and um, you don't want to do B diet, you obviously should go with the diet that'll work for you and something that you can adhere to because if they're both going to get you to the same place, obviously what you should go with the route that works for you and some. It's something that you can adhere to. Um, you know, there's so many different fad diets out there. And if they all get you to the same place, what's the fucking difference, right? So you should always do something that works for you and something that you can adhere to. You know, whether it's calorie counting, whether it's macro counting, whether it's fucking Weight Watchers, um, keto, high carb, low carb, flexible dieting. There's just there's just so many fucking different styles and vari variances. And... Um, do what works for you. Do something that you can adhere to and something that you actually enjoy doing and um, you'll actually stick with it and you'll actually get to where you want to be. So that's my take on it. Let's go to the next question. 14, when reaching your goal weight, what's the first thing you want to do? Honestly, the first thing I want to do is celebrate because 172.4 is so far away. It doesn't feel like it's ever going to happen. If it does, I deserve an actual small loan of a million dollars. What's up, Donald Trump? No, I'm just joking. Um, I, I just want to celebrate. I want to be so proud. And I feel like, you know, the first thing I want to do is, you know, visit family and travel more. But I feel like I'd probably already be doing that because once I'm in like the 200s, I'm actually going to be able to travel. And I really do want to travel like a road trip or something. I think that sounds so freaking fun. And I'm just tired of being stuck in Kentucky and being stuck in this house. It is not the life for me. It's not who I'm supposed to be. There is this whole other version inside of me. And I just feel so trapped and you guys don't even know that girl yet. And I feel like that's the craziest part of it all is like, there's a whole other Amberlynn just wanting to uh, just like pop out and be its person. But my weight has held me back tremendously. So the next question is, uh, what is she going to do once she meets her goal? She said she wants to celebrate. I'm all for celebrating. Um, I just would hate to see her celebrate so much that it kind of triggers a bad um, bad binge, if you will, and it makes her kind of go into a spiral. Not saying it would happen, just saying it's a possibility. Um, but I would figure if she ever does get to her goal 
of uh, 100 and whatever pounds that she would have her um, eating habits and her binging under control by that point. So I feel like that shouldn't be um, any type of worry. Then she says that she'll be able to travel and be able to visit her family and to be able to go on road trips and shit. And honestly, that's very fucking sad that, that she can't even do that right now. Um, you know, here I am living my life and going to work and driving and shit. And this is shit that she hasn't even, that she actually appreciates when she is able to do it. So, um, it's very sad that she can't even do that kind of stuff. And, um, I'm all for someone trying to, um, live their life to the fullest and being able to do things that they should be able to do. And the fact that, you know, weight has taken over her life. Literally, it's pretty fucking sad if I, if I have to be honest. So let's go to the next question. So that is the end of this video. I really hope the people that I tag will see this. I feel like Jordan Shrinks and Obese to Beast won't see it. And if they do, they probably won't do it because I'm not really sure if it's like really suits their channel very much. But I know Cherry Berry Weight Loss and Charlie Gold like to watch my videos and react to me. And I'm just, I'm very curious what you guys have to say about it. All right. So that's the end of the video. Um, that's my thoughts. That's my reaction to her questions and uh, how she answered them. Um, so yeah, this is, um, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome to my channel. I do reviews. I do reactions. I do comedy stuff. I do fitness stuff. I pretty much do every fucking thing. So if you guys like what you see, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you a fucking penny and either does hitting that like button. So I'd really appreciate if you hit the like button too. And, uh, that's going to wrap up today's video. But before I close it out, like I said, I got these shirts straight out of shape, but bitch, I'm trying. And um, if Amber Lynn hits me up, I will absolutely get one of these shirts made for her as long as she says she's a fan of the channel and um, she's she's dedicated to losing some weight. I'll absolutely send her a shirt if she sends me a DM on Instagram. Hit me up, Amber Lynn. I'll hook you up with the shirt. I don't know if I'll be able to get your size. I'm not trying to be a dick, but I don't know what size you are and I don't even know if it's fucking possible to even get your size. But I'll hook you up with this shirt because it, it's, I mean, this shirt's pretty cool, man. Look at this. Straight out of shape, but bitch, I'm trying. She could wear this, and it's, it's literally like a fucking get-out-of-jail-free card. You wear it, <clears throat> no one can say shit, because you're trying at least. But anyways, <laughs> fuck all that. That's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for the support, as always. Let me know what you want to see next. And if you like to fucking bad, subscribe, share, like, and comment below. Scroll over on Troll and let me go some fucking so Whoa! Don't forget to follow me on all my social media. It's Opperman Fitness, Facebook on Fitness, Snapchat on Fitness, Instagram, Opperman Fitness. Don't forget to like my band page, Divide and Mention on Facebook. Follow my band, Divide and Mention on Spotify. Shop whatever somebody needs at TigerFitness.com using my fill link, which will be in the description box below. All that should be in the description box below. <clears throat> and I also have a TikTok at Opperman Fitness in case you guys happen to give a fuck. I do some funny shit on there, some silly shit on there. And I don't have a Twitter because fuck Twitter. And make sure you guys hit that like button. Doesn't cost you a fucking penny. And I'm out. I'll check you guys later. Yay.